Hello and welcome. Today we are going to be learning the Linux shell, which isn't a very clear term. And so I just want to start off talking about that. What is the Linux shell? It really, Linux has nothing to do with the shell. Linux is a kernel for an operating system. What we're going to be looking at today is what's called Bash. There are multiple different shells out there, and Bash is one of the most common ones. And uh, so, for example, on my system, I run Z shell or ZSH as my default shell. But Bash is around and used in a lot of systems. Used to be the default on the Mac operating systems and is the default on a lot of Linux uh, distros. Uh, I think that the Mac OS has switched to Z Shell as a default, but I'm assuming that Bash is still installed on Apple devices, uh, Apple desktops and laptops by default. Someone, if anyone has one of those devices, you can confirm with me, but since Bash is so commonly used in scripts, I'm assuming even though the default shell on Apple computers is Z shell, that Bash is still around. Now, I once had a viewer say to me, oh, uh, Macs have Linux built in. And I thought he misspoke and he meant like current versions of Windows, newer versions of Windows have the uh, Windows subsystem for Linux. And then talking to him a little bit more, I realized, no, he thought that the shell, the terminal, which are two different things, um, was Linux. And Linux is something, Linux is a kernel. It's, it's a piece of software that basically allows the software on your computer to communicate with the hardware. So you never ever interact with it. The shells we use our shells, they're just programs, and they run on multiple operating systems. So again, Bash is what we're looking at today. Uh, you can run Bash natively on Windows, at least from XP on up. I don't know about before that. Like I said, it's probably installed default on Apple devices and on most Linux distributions. And lighter weight systems like routers and modems and TVs and smart plugs and all your smart devices that run Linux uh, usually have a shell. They may not have Bash installed. What they will normally have is a program called BusyBox or possibly ToyBox. I've talked about BusyBox a lot in the past. It is a wonderful tool. ToyBox is someone trying to recreate BusyBox under a different license. It isn't as full. A lot of Android devices will have ToyBox installed instead of BusyBox. It just depends on your device. But BusyBox is a single binary, a single program that's usually around a meg to a, a megabyte and a half. And it's not just the shell, but a whole bunch of your core tools that you normally use, all built into this one binary file. And so you'll find it everywhere, and if you don't have it, it's easily installed on almost any device. And we'll look at that a little bit in the future. But right now, I'm going to go over how to use Bash. And there's so much that you can do. I'm going to start with some of the basic things you do anytime you learn a new programming language. We're going to learn how to get user input, display information to the screen, how to save that information to a file, and how to retrieve that. That's what we're looking at today. We're going to put that in a script. But let's go ahead and jump into our shell here and have a quick look. Okay, so here we are. First of all, we're going to learn about the echo command. So this is how the echo command works. You just type in echo, and you can type in something like, hello world and it will just print out the text that I just typed see hello world uh, so you could do it just like that but it's a good habit to put your strings which are your letters and words in quotation marks so this will give us the same output but you'll see as we go along that the quotations do make a difference so we can say hello world and we can also say hello world with single quotations, which is just an apostrophe on both sides. So what's the difference between these two? Well, there's special characters that you can use in your strings, in your words, uh, that act differently. The single quotations here, which again is just an apostrophe, uh, treat this more like a little literal string. So for example, let's say I wanted to say uh, hello world again. But let's say I wanted to say, Tom said, ah, hello world, and I want to put this in quotation marks. We lose those quotation marks because it's seeing these quotation marks as special characters, which is supposed to be wrapping around our strings. So we have some options here. First of all, you have to spell world right. Now I'm going to hit up arrow. So up arrow and down arrow allows you to go through your previous commands so you don't have to retype everything out. So I can say, okay, I want quotation marks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say backslash before these quotation marks. And what that's gonna do is say, hey, treat these quotation marks as if they are quotation marks, not special characters. Boom. So uh, another option would be to put it inside 
single quotes like this. That will also do it. But let's say I wanted to say, uh, Tom said, it's a good day, right? We're going to have some problems here because it's seeing the single quote. It's thinking that we're ending here and that this is something different. It's looking for a closing quote, single quote, which doesn't happen. So if you're ever in a program, like right now, it's still running. I'm not at my shell. Uh, you, most programs you can kill or cancel with control C. So if you ever get stuck in a program at, at the shell, usually control and C will kill out of that. I'm also going to press control L, which is going to clear my screen. You can also type the clear command to clear the screen. We'll use that in a little bit. I'm going to hit up arrow again to go to my previous commands. And here, what I can do, it might be an easiest option, is to put this in quotation marks and then backslash out these quotation marks. And now we get, Tom said, it's a good day inside these quotations. So that's where it can get a little tricky is when you have quotation marks inside your quotations. So that's something to keep in mind. But another thing that you might have, if I said echo, hello world, and I can say like this, and it will do fine. But if I say uh, two exclamation marks, or they're also called bangs, okay, what just happened here? Well, let me again run this command, right? If I just at the shell here do bang, bang, or exclamation mark, exclamation mark, what it's saying is run the last command. So what it's going to do is it's going to show me what the last command was, and then it's going to run it. So when we say this, it's saying, okay, echo, hello world, run the last command and display the last command. So now we get all of this. So again, there's special characters. Uh, and if I wanted to have those double exclamation marks here, it might be a good idea to use single quotes. So you have to keep that in mind. Uh, another thing is, let's say I want to say echo, I have $5. Okay, I have and the $5 disappeared, right? Because in our shell here, dollar sign represents a variable. So it's looking for the variable five, which does not exist. So it's displaying nothing there. So let's go ahead and create a variable real quick. And all I have to do is let's say I want to create a variable called name. I'm going to say name equals, and I'm going to say Chris. And then I can say echo, my name is dollar sign name. And it replaces dollar sign name with whatever the variable equals. So if I was to change that, I can now say John. And if I was to run this command again, echo, my name is dollar sign name, it's now going to say my name is John. Okay, so we've created variables. We've shown how to use them, and we've shown some examples of special characters that might trip you up with the echo command. And again, if I wanted to say something like uh, dollar sign name is dollar sign name, and I wanted to say that this is dollar sign name and not what the variable equals, I'm going to say backslash. So this is saying, okay, this is not a special character, just print dollar sign and then the word name. Boom. So now we got name is John. So again, special characters can get a little confusing. That's why I'm bringing them in right off the bat because I might just show you the echo command and all of a sudden you go to put a dollar sign or a couple exclamation marks and things start acting weird or, or an apostrophe. So I wanted to go over that right off the bat. So you can say the next character is a special character. Don't use it as a special character by using the backslash. Or you can use single quotes, but then single quotes might give you issues if you have apostrophes in your words. So we've learned how to save variables and print stuff to the screen. What about getting user input? So I'm going to use the read command. I can say read name, right? And now it's going to wait for me to enter something. So here I can say Bob. I just had the user input something and it saved it to the variable name. So now I can say echo you entered dollar sign name and it'll say you entered Bob. I can run the name command again, and then I can say Tom. Now, if I echo out, you entered dollar sign name, it's going to say you entered dollar sign name. You just learned how to get user input, but we didn't prompt the user for anything. Now, we can put multiple commands on one line by saying something like read name, and then a semicolon means this is a new command. I can say echo 
you entered dollar sign name. And what it's going to do is I'm going to hit enter. It's going to wait because it's waiting for the user to input information. I'll say Tim. And when I hit enter, it's going to continue with the next command and it'll say you entered Tim. So you can do commands on one line. So what a lot of people will do in a script and we'll create a script. Uh, and again, a script is just basically everything we're typing at the shell here, uh, we can put in a text file and Bash will actually read that text file just like an actor would read a script and it'll act it all out. So I'm going to say echo what is your name and then I can say read name. So it's going to say what is your name and I can say Sally and it saved that to a variable and what I can do is now add another command I can say hello dollar sign name. So again, it's going to, I'm gonna hit enter. It runs this first command, waits for me to enter something. I'll say Tim, and when I hit enter, it's gonna say, hello, Tim. So I'm running multiple commands on one line, but we don't need to do this. So the readme command, some of the commands we run are external programs, and some are built into the bash shell. In this particular case, the read command is built into bash, and this is an example of where one shell may differ from another. Because I can, while in bash, say, read dash p so i'm giving it the p option which is for prompt i can say enter name and i can say name and then i can say new command echo hello dollar sign name and this doesn't have to be in quotations but again it's a good practice i'm going to hit enter it's going to say enter name i'll say chris and it'll say hello chris now if i was to come down here this is a z shell prompt so i can know i, if I type in echo dollar sign zero that is one way, dollar sign zero is a special variable, which I'll talk about in later videos, but it's telling me right here that we're in the Z shell. If I was to come up here and say echo dollar sign zero, it's gonna say bash, because this is my bash prompt, okay? Uh, and if I say bash shell, someone's gonna get mad at me because SH stands for shell, so bash, B-A stands for born again. So this is the born again shell, so if I say bash shell, that means, that's like saying ATM machine means AT, uh, automatic telling machine machine. Anyway, I just wanted to clarify that because someone will get on my case for saying bash shell. Um, so down here, if I was to say read, and I was to say dash P, enter your name, name, saying that variable, and then trying to do this, it's gonna give me an error because, again, the read command in this case is built into our shell, and it handles it different, and in the Z shell, the, their read command does not have a dash P option. It may have some other option uh, on getting prompts, but it doesn't have that dash p option. So just wanted to clarify that, that that is one of the differences. A lot of shells are very similar in a lot of ways, but different when we're talking about internal commands. Uh, so now that we have all that, what do I wanna do next? Well, let's go back to the echo command a little bit. I wanna talk about a few other things. So I can say echo, hello world, and what I can do is I can put in a character here, backslash n, okay? And then I can say, it's a nice day, right? And what it's gonna print is print, hello world, backslash n, it's a nice day. Well, the backslash n is, one, is a special character that we can say, look at certain special characters. This is a simplification of what this means, but I can say dash n. And so now when I do this, not dash n, sorry. Dash N means no new line. We'll go over that in a moment. Dash E. And what that did now is it looks at this backslash N as a new line character. So now it printed hello world. And then it went to a new line and said, it's a nice day. If I was to put two backslashes, backslash N's I mean, it will say hello world, enter, enter, basically new line, new line. It's a nice day. Another option is backslash T which is a tab character. So it's like pressing tab on the keyboard. And again, both those only work when you have that dash E option. Otherwise, it's going to print that literally as backslash T. And you can combine these. So I can say backslash N, backslash T, and have to have that dash E option. And it says, hello world, new line, tab over, it's a nice day. And then I can do that again here, backslash N, backslash T, and I can say, the sun is out. And so now we got hello world, new line, indented in, it's a nice day, the sun is out. So I just wanted to show you that. 
So as of right now, we have learned how to print stuff to the screen, get user information, save variable. Did we go over save variables? We did go over save variables. Save user input as a variable, and then you know print that out to the screen. Let's talk about saving stuff to a file. So a command you'll use a lot at the shell will be ls, which is to list files. I'm in a current directory that I created for this tutorial. There's nothing in it. I type ls, nothing exists, right? So what I can do is I can say echo Chris, right? And I'll echo Chris, but if I say the greater than symbol and give it a file name, I'll just say it name.lst, which is just a text file. I'm just giving it the extension of lst for list. I do that and we don't get Chris to the shell, but if I list out my files now, you'll see that there is a file called list or name.list. I can now use the cat command on any file to see what's in that file. Cat is short for concatenate, which is actually used to combine files together, but you can use it to display what's inside a file. Cat in the name of the file, I'll hit enter, and it shows me what's in that file. I can run this command again, and I can change it to John, and now the word John is in this file. So I can cat name.ls, and we get John. Because I created, I overwrote that file by say greater than. If instead of saying greater than, I say greater than, greater than, that means append to this file. So I can say, Chris, now if I cut out, cut out that file, uh, I'm saying John and Chris. Now also, there's tab completion on most shells. So you notice that I can start typing cat and I can type in n, and if I hit tab, it auto completes what I'm typing. It, it guesses, it goes, okay, you want a file, let's look at the file names. There's only one file that starts with n, let's put that. And so you don't have to type out full things. I can also do CA and then hit tab. And it's, it hit tab twice, it's gonna give me a list of commands and then I can hit T or whatever. And different shells will complete that different ways depending on how you have it set up. But the default is to just start listing stuff and then I can go T and now I hit Control L again to clear the screen. And I can hit, now hit tab. I don't have to type anything because there's only one file in this directory. Now, if I come back up here, I can add Chris to that file again. And now it says John Chris Chris. And if I want to, I can create another file and I can call this list.list. .list. Sure. Now, sorry, not cat. I meant to do into list.list. .list. So it's telling me that there's no such file or directory called list.ls or lst. Now, if I list out, you can see I have two files. If I type in cat, space, and hit enter, or tab, you can see, oh, these are my options. Now I can hit L and tab, and it will autocomplete. And again, I can add more names to that. Let's start creating a script really quick. I'm almost done with this part, this tutorial. I'll start another one. Uh, but we are going to use a text editor. The text editor I like is called Vim, but you can use whatever text there you like, but I'm gonna use Vim. Actually, technically I'm using what's called NeoVim in most cases, but this is uh, usually what I use by default. Today I'm using Vim. And I'm just gonna call it my script, .sh. The .sh is a file extension that means absolutely nothing to the shell. Uh, it's just gonna see this as a text file. Once we're inside our file here, what I need to do is type in bin bash. Now this isn't a, a Vim tutorial, so I'm not gonna go over too much on Vim. Uh, you can use whatever text editor you like, uh, but let, let me quit out of this, but I will go over some basic stuff. So I'm saying Vim, if you have Vim installed, it's a text editor. Come in here, to start typing, I have to type in I for insert mode, okay? Now I'm giving what it's called, what is called the shebang line. The first line of any script you write uh, tells it what interpreter to use. Again, we're using the bash shell. It's saying use the bash program to read every line in this file. If you're using Python, you would have to point it to your Python executable. If you're using Perl, you have to point it to your Perl executable. So the shebang line is very important, okay? So now I can just say echo hello world. I can save this, so I hit escape to get out of insert mode. And then I'm gonna hit shift and I'm gonna put a colon here, WQ. Again, I'm not going over Vim much in this tutorial. I just wanna say that in case you try to use it. Use whatever text editor you like. It could be a graphical one. I mean, you could write these in Notepad if you wanted. If you were on a Windows machine, I don't highly suggest it. Anyway, so I just created a file. Again, I can cat out what's in that file. That's what my script looks like on a Unix and Unix-like operating system. Linux is a Unix-like operating system. You have to make executable programs executable. You can't just run it without saying, 
this is a program basically. So I'm gonna say change mod, change the mode, plus X it means make it executable and give it the file name. Now I can say dot slash in the name of the file. Why dot slash? Dot slash just means it's in the current directory. If I wasn't in this directory, I could tell it where it was. It's in the temp B directory, right? But since it's in this directory, we're gonna say dot slash. Why do you do that instead of just this? On other operating systems like, you know, Windows, when I say other operating systems, I think just Windows, uh, when you run a command, it's going to look at your current directory for most things by default. Now imagine you're running, you know, different commands and let's say I have a command on my system called nmap. If we didn't do dot slash, if I went to a directory and I didn't know there was a program in there called nmap and I try to run that, it might try to run that script first and it could be malicious and I would not even know. So it's a security thing that if something's not put in your path directory, which we will get into more in future tutorials, you have to say specifically, I want to run the one in this directory. So dot slash just means this current directory, run this script, enter. And again, we have to make it executable just the one time on a new system. If you were to download this from a website, you'd have to do it one time just to make sure you don't download something and it runs without your knowledge because you accidentally clicked on it or accidentally uh, typed in it thinking you're running a different command. Okay, so let's go back into our script here. So again, I can put another line. I can say, hello, Chris. I can run it again, again, dot slash and the name of the script. Let's go ahead and create a variable. I'm just gonna say name equals, and you can't put spaces in, in a bash script for your variable. So if I did this, that would not work. You can see that in Vim, if you have color coding, color highlighting, uh, highlighting setup, it's going to tell you that something's wrong because you can see the colors change. So I'm just gonna say Chris for this, and I can just say dollar sign name. Now, if we run our script, it's gonna say, hello world, hello Chris. But again, what we want to do is we can say, welcome, and I'm going to say read dash P, and it's okay that we're doing this because we're telling it it's a bash script. So we know that it's using bash in this case. Uh, enter your name, name. I'm gonna run this script and I'm gonna say Tom and now it's say hello Tom. If I was to leave it empty, it's gonna say hello nothing. In a future video, we'll talk about how to check making sure that that, that variable exists. Anyway, I'm gonna stop here on this video and I will continue this tutorial in my next video. I do thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with the K. There's a link in the description. I thank you for watching. I hope you found this useful. We're gonna go in a lot more in depth in future videos, so keep on watching. Subscribe so you don't miss anything. Check out my Patreon page, PayPal page, Libre page, uh, Libre Pay page, I should say. Buy me a coffee. All that stuff, if you go to filmsbychris.com, there's either links to that stuff in the description of this video or filmsbychris.com. You can click on the support section and support me in any of those ways. I do thank you for watching. As always, I hope that you have a great day.